what have you learned about flamenco from watching Juan CD? And what um, you know, what are the elements that excite you? Um, and you know, what what are some of the things that um, that you saw tonight that uh, you think kind of best exemplify what his, his style is about? So a lot of similarity between his company and ours. Uh, Juan has a very contemporary view of flamenco. He's trying to push the art form forward, uh, and that's similar to what we do with our own ballet company. Uh, we also felt that um, there's a great um, genuinity and um, authenticity um, to the company, and we were attracted by that. Um, and we also believe that in order to move the art form forward, you need to know what became, you know, before you. Um, and Juan has a very, you know, very um, strong tradition and rooted, you know, in, in the tradition of flamenco. And so we kind of felt some similarity between the two companies, uh, and we thought we could work well together. I'm curious, the group of dancers um, that you that you worked with, uh, how long have you been working together? How did you um, find each other? Um, how are you, why did you choose to be the only male in the, in the company? Some of the dancers, I know them since they were like this. Mm -hmm. When I first came to the United States and they were taking classes and so I've seen them grow and others. We met performing in a different company. Yeah, sometimes it's not always an artistic decision. Um, and there's some logistic challenges, as uh, Juan explained, and there's very few great, you know, male dancers already in this country, um, and the one in Spain are, you know, very busy. Um, there's also, not to be crass, but uh, financial concerns. <laughs> um, you know, it's a big group from Spain. We have to do a lot of um, visas and travel from overseas, and um, and it's only the second year really of you know our association, and so uh, we might might grow the group, you know, in a few years. Can you tell us a little bit? Uh, from the show tonight, what are some of the elements that would be considered traditional and what ways are you kind of experimenting and, and looking towards the future? Brian, you ask what is traditional and what's not. Um, and that sometimes makes me smile when I hear comments you know, from the audience. Uh, flamenco is nothing traditional. Flamenco has moved to many different countries mm -hmm. and always evolving. Uh, and that's kind of, in a way, the essence of, of uh, fla what flamenco is. It's always been evolving. It's kind of a melting pot of many different cultures. And so to claim that there is a traditional way of flamenco, it's a little bit ironic because mm -hmm. it's, it's always been morphing. Looking very, very back, comes from India, Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. And us looking at their art form now, they dance barefoot and they have, they call it gungurus, the bells. And they have the same footwork technique. Mm -hmm. And then there is a lot of Middle Eastern belly dance uh, elements in the chanting, in the, the female dancers. So it's a mix of different cultures. Uh, the question is about the dance uh, with the shawls at the beginning and whether that comes from a tradition or whether that's something that you introduced. The manton, the shawls, the piano shawls, it's very traditional. Um, it has a little contemporary flat, not really, a little bit. And that specific dance is called Guajira, Guajira that influences with Cuba. And the shawl itself, the, the Origins of the shawl is from a Asia, from a silk Chinese silk uh, old days, and they somehow bring it to Spain and became part of um, the dance. There's a certain technique, but it's all it comes from the old school uh, traditional flamenco. Uh, shorts. Can you talk a bit about the training um, and the technique of the footwork and, and kind of how that develops? Gypsies were persecuted in a lot of countries and so they had to run very fast out of the country. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the beginning, that's my theory. <laughs> there is a technique behind it that you start when, do you, when you're young, like ballet, you have to start when you're young. There's a certain muscles that you get and disciplina, and there's certain workouts. Usually a class uh, starts with stretching and all kinds of, that in order to prevent inj injuries. And then there's 
certain w uh, work techniques work out for the first 30 minutes in class. You start slower, slow, you know, and then the teacher speeds it up and then they have to maintain it for a while, you know. You get pretty tired, you start sweating right away. And you have to do it again and again and again and again and next year and next year and becomes part of your routine. And then you get a little faster and a little stronger. The, the question is whether there's improvisation, uh, either with the singing and then also maybe with the dancing too, if you can address that. In the show that you just saw, um, there's um, each number, there's um, a theme. And when there are ensemble dancers, it's most likely set. But sometimes the singer is singing it a little longer, they have to wait and hold it, or it's a little shorter. So the instinct is there. When you dance alone, then um, when I do, I devote myself to what they sing, and I connect with the spirit, and it's like you open your wings, and you start flying. And, it's, and then there were some group numbers where we open it and break it and, leave, and give the uh, ensemble dancers a moment to shine and do what they want to do, follow the singing. But mostly it's connect with the singers and the musicians. And what they express, you can see, and we get into us and we express that then our own way.